Today's uh, topic that is supposed to be about importance of reading Prabhupada's books is a seminar that I made out and I've been giving it in some places. I don't know whether I gave it in Krishna Katha Desh. Uh, I don't remember so. And uh, it is came about from a SGGS meeting, sannyasis, gurus, GBCs, etc. And there was a meeting and there was a brainstorming about the most important thing required for us to institute in our entire society. And it came out in various breakout groups that Prabhupada's books are not being read thoroughly and they should be read. That seemed to be the priority in many places. So a few years back, the GBC declared that to be a priority and asked everybody to encourage reading of Prabhupada's books. At that time, I put together a simple uh, seminar with some history in it. Some of these things may already be known to you. You may be familiar with it. I also gave some portions of this in conferences of the BBT in South Africa and in other places. So I thought it will be interesting and information collated together with a little history, some of which or most of it you may already be knowing. But then I thought I'll show this to you and then we can have a little discussion. Because it is of a great vital importance to read Prabhupada's books. And we are going to just see what is it that Prabhupada has brought down to the whole world and given it free to everybody. How valuable it is. Having said that, I would like to move ahead a little bit. I hope you're able to see my screen. Uh, our government is a democratic government in most countries. And we call it off the people, by the people, for the people, the way it was spoken about by great leaders. I don't want to name them here. Similarly, I call our management in his con. Prabhupada said, books are the basis. What does it mean? It means, I say, off the books, by the books, for the books of Srila Prabhupada. It may sound like a fanatic statement, but I think there is some interesting foundational meaning to that. What does it mean, Sankirtan governance? Word Sankirtan means, Bahubir Militva Kirtayante Sankirtana Muchyade. Many people get together and chant the name of the Lord. It is called Harinam Sankirtan. And Bhakti Siddhanta Sarsri Thakur gave a greater, more broader meaning. He spoke about Brihat Kirtan, Brihat Sankirtan. And he said, we should make a lot of noise about the name, fame, glory, and pastimes of Krishna and encourage it so much. So he spoke about Brihat Kirtan. He said the printing press and the printing of books and widely distributing it is the greater, louder Kirtan. It be heard louder than the Mridanga is being heard. So he called it Brihat Kirtan. And he meant in a more exotic, in a more transcendental, extrapolated way, what it means to actually have many people read the books and understand Krishna and speak about it. So his uh, vision was to flood the world with Krishna conscious literature. So Prabhupada, he understood his guru's mission, his vision, his desire. And he went ahead to carry it out. He started very humbly. He was printing and publishing the Back to Godhead magazine. Those times, one or two sheets of paper, four or five pages he was printing. And those days, he took it very seriously because he understood clearly what is the mission to spread the glories of Krishna, anything and everything should be utilized. So he started publishing and printing. And over a long period of time, he came up uh, to America and then he started publishing and printing. And then the whole world was set up with PBT, Bhaktivedanta Book Trust, 
and uh, languages are being printed and lots of books are being made available. But this hearted very humbly. Prabhupada knew books are the basis because this is what Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur has mentioned. And Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur personally told him, if you get money, print books. I am a little disgusted with this Bagh Bazaar temple that I've built. I feel I have half a mind to rip out all this marble, sell it and print books. So you will see a video clipping of Prabhupada, which I am not playing here, that he said, I understood that he wants books printed. And so he dedicated himself to printing those books. And he asked us to read those books, print and publish those books, read those books for your own spiritual advancement and knowledge, and then speak about it to others. So when I say off the books, by the books, for the books, I mean, we should publish the books. We must distribute the books. We must read the books. We must explain the content of these books. That's why it's all books oriented. In a larger sense, it is Sankirtan governance. Our government is Sankirtan government. This is my understanding. It's all based on Prabhupada's books. If you don't understand Prabhupada's books properly, you won't actually go much uh, long way. So Prabhupada loved to see new versions of his books printed in different languages. And he was working very hard translating his books. He was staying up late in the night, waking up at 12 o'clock. He would go to sleep at 10 o'clock, wake up at 12 o'clock, start writing his books right up to 5 o'clock, Mangalarati and beyond. And 6.30, he would walk outside, come back for Dashnarati at 7.15, 7.30, then give Bhagavatam class and then start his you know, society's work, traveling, preaching, addressing devotees, solving problems, etc. In the night time, he was writing his books. So there was a devotee who came to Prabhupada and told him that Bhakti Vinod Thakur is, your, is uh, his most favorite author. And Prabhupada looked at him very curiously from above his glasses. And then he went ahead uh, to glorify Bhakti Vinod Thakur and his writings and he's my you know, most favorite author, he mentioned. Prabhupada looked at him and said, Bhakti Vinod Thakur is your second favorite author. This is a very amazing statement. Without telling him anything, he told him, Bhakti Vinod Thakur is not your number one favorite author. He is your second favorite author. That's all he said, which means, obviously, wanted him to know, I am your most favorite author. I introduced you to Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And I have already taken the essence of everything in Bhakti Vinod Thakur and put it in my books. You read my books first. So this is a very telling statement. Prabhupada is very clearly saying, don't read previous Acharya's books and prefer them over mine. Read my books first. Read my books first. So you must understand the seriousness. And why would somebody say, read my books, my books, my books? Is he glorifying himself? Is he want to make himself, you know, branded and known? What type of, uh, you know, person is this? Definitely Prabhupada is not one of those mundane people. We all know. He has a purpose behind it. We're going to discover that. What he is carrying. So this is a quote of Prabhupada. I'm stressing at this point that all of my students shall be very much conversant with the philosophy of Krishna consciousness and that they should read our books very diligently, at least one or two hours daily and try to understand the subject matter from varieties of angles. 1972. Another one, very strong one. If you want to stay in Krishna consciousness, you will have to develop firm faith in Guru and Shastra. Therefore, you must study my books very scrutinizingly. Follow the four regulative principles very strictly and chant 16 rounds daily, avoiding the 10 offenses. Don't take this movement as something cheap. If you take it cheap, you'll get cheap stuff. 
This is the amount of times Prabhupada, the words he has used about his books. I took this out from the Vanipedia. How frequently, in what mood, what method you should use? Different categories, 60 ways. You should, how frequently? Again and again you should read. Always you should read, as much as possible you should read. As soon as you get time, you must read. At least one or two hour daily you should read. At least three hours a day you should read. Constantly, continuously, daily, so on, installments, more and more. There are so many things like that. And mood, critically, deeply, devotedly, diligently, expertly, faithfully, intensely, nicely, penetratingly, persistently, philosophically, profoundly, profusely, seriously, sincerely, submissively, thoughtfully, with adherence, with care. It is a mood with which you should read. All this with reference to his books has been removed from all his writings. What method you should use? From all angles of vision, from different lights of directions right, from different points of view, impacting, uh, the, inspecting the subject matter from all angles of approach and savoring the new understandings. To understand the subject matter from different angles of vision by discussing them in association of devotees with the cooperation of your God brothers and God sisters, with the help of other devotees, with the help of your senior God brothers and sisters, minutely, scientifically, scrutinizingly, step by step, you name it. Can you imagine the importance of reading that Prabhupada has given to you? He's all the possible words in English language. There's nothing left. All these words in connection with reading his books. This has been picked out. So you know the importance. So we know simple things like there's a wealth of information about my life, about God and this world, and great inspiration for chanting the holy name, etc. These I just take while I do the seminar. In a pointed question, how can I please you, Prabhupada say, you may please me, please me the most by reading my books, following the instructions therein. Very simple. You won't please me the most if you give me $50,000. You're not going to please me the most if you actually do da 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 so many great things. You will actually please me the most if you read my books and understand. Because this is what I have come for, to give you Krishna consciousness, explain from the whole parampara all the knowledge distilled from the Vedic literatures and give it to you. Okay? So please note very carefully the mood of Prabhupada and what he is asking us to do. Hearing. Simply hearing is not all. One must realize the text with proper attention. The word in Nivishta means that Sutta Goswami drank the juice of the Bhagavadam through his ears. That is the real process of receiving the Bhagavadam. One should hear with rapt attention from the real person and then he can at once realize the presence of Lord Krishna in every page of Prabhupada's book. There is Lord Krishna. The secret of knowing the Bhagavadam is mentioned here. No one can give rapt attention who is not pure in mind. No one can be pure in mind who is not pure in action. No one can be pure in action who is not pure in eating, sleeping, fearing, and mating. But somehow or other, if someone hears with rapt attention from the right person at the very beginning, one can assuredly see Lord Krishna in person in the pages of the Bhagavatam. This is what we are reading. This is from Prabhupada's words. All of you, do you want to have an experience of Krishna or not? Raise your hand if you think so, either digitally or through your video screen that I may see. Actually, how many of you want to experience Krishna? Seriously. Seriously, how many want to experience Krishna? This is what is being spoken about here. Raise your hand if you seriously think, yes, I want to do it. Yeah, all of us are serious about this. This is what we are here for. And look at Prabhupada saying, you can see Krishna in these pages of the Bhagavatam. Thank you for your responses. You can see Krishna in the pages of the Bhagavatam. We should take this as it is. Prabhupada is an as it is man. He says it, he means it. It will happen. If you do it as for what he's saying. So I will skip that realization set. Speaker of the Bhagavatam also said, but uh, Prabhupada said at the same time, many things about people who 
speak the Bhagavatam and speak Krishna conscious literature in a manner that is not proper. Parrot-like chanting of the Vedas uh, is a very nice quotation here. The only differences are that the Vedic mantras mostly begin with Pranava Omkara, and it requires some training to pronounce the material accent, without which the mantras cannot be successfully chanted. Although Srila Sutta Goswami was a preacher of the first order, he did not bother much about the metrical pronunciation of the Vedas mantras. But that does not mean that Srimad Bhagavatam uh, is of less importance than the Vedic mantras. On the contrary, it is ripened fruit of all the Vedas, as stated before. Besides that, the most perfectly liberated soul, Srila Shukadeva Goswami, is absorbed in the studies of the Bhagavatam, although he is already self-realized. Although he is already self-realized, Srila Sutta Goswami is following his footsteps, and therefore his position uh, is not the least less important because he was not expert in chanting Vedic mantras with metric pronunciation, right? Which is depends more on practice than actual realization. Realization is more important than parrot-like chanting. This is what you will see in Prabhupada's books. You will see his realizations written. Prabhupada said that my purpose are my personal ecstasy. So these things are very important. So I brought you another dialogue. Krishna is very perfect. Guru Dasa watched Srila Prabhupada laughing while reading his Krishna book. You are laughing at your own books, Prabhupada. I did not write these books. Krishna wrote them. Krishna sat here. Prabhupada pointed to his shoulder. He wrote them from here. Srila Prabhupada, your dear most friend Krishna sat on your shoulder and spoke to you. Just as Arjuna, dear most friend Krishna, stood before him and spoke the Bhagavad Gita. Do you know that I read my books every day? This is Prabhupada speaking. I learn something new every time I read. Do you know why? Because I did not write these books. Every time I sat down to write, Krishna appeared and dictated to me what to write. So I am not writing. Krishna is writing. Please see these quotes I'm bringing to you to see what is the work that is done by Prabhupada and whom he represents, what he has put as content in his books and what he is guaranteeing that you can get from reading them. You can see Krishna on the page and he's saying, I am reading my own books. They were not written by me. They're written by Krishna sitting on my shoulder. These are actual words of Prabhupada. Okay. And what will happen if you don't read? Captured very beautifully. Ye leela amrita vinakaya yadi annapane Tabe bhakti radurupala jivana Yare ek bindu pane utfulita tanumane Hase kaya kora ye nartana Men become strong and stout by eating sufficient grains, but the devotee who simply eats ordinary grains, but does not taste the transcendental pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Krishna, gradually becomes weak and falls down from the transcendental position. However, if one drinks but a drop of the nectar of Krishna's pastimes, his body and mind begin to bloom and he begins to laugh, sing and dance. Look at the purport. All the devotees connected with the Krishna consciousness movement must read all the books that have been translated, the Chaitanya Chirta Amrita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita and others. Otherwise, after some time, they will simply eat, sleep and fall down from their position. Thus, they will miss the opportunity to attain an eternal blissful life of transcendental pleasure. Very strong comment given by Prabhupada. Then there is the argument, preaching is more important, no service is more important. Goshti Anandis, right? Then there is Bhajananandi. Reading and going deep into the rasa is needed to sustain our taste and enthusiasm. Chant nicely, read personally always, away from the hustle and bustle. So there are two types of people I've seen. Some of them feel I want to retire to Vrindavan, chant Hare Krishna, read peacefully, and then live. And there are others who say, no, we have to preach the message. Prabhupada has told us, set up his institution, build temples, everything. Some fully go that side, some fully go this side, some stay in the middle. I normally take a discussion on this on 
this sort of, of a Zoom situation, we may not be able to do that. But a good balance of both is required is what Prabhupada is telling throughout his works. You will, you will see that. There are different kinds of reading that people do. Some people read as part of their sadhana. I must read. Prabhupada is told I must read. Every day I read for one hour. Every day I read for two hours. So quickly they will read. They will chant Hare Krishna 16 rounds. and Sadhana oriented reading. Some others feel, wow, these books are very interesting. I want to not just read them. I want to study them. They sit and study it. They actually make notes. They ask questions. And then they think about it and say, wow, amazing. Then they speak about it to others. Study. Some people are able to read only when they have to prepare for a talk. Bhakti Viksha. Oh, I have to do today. My gosh, you quickly go and read something. And they note down some few things. Because I have to talk, I am going to read. Otherwise, normally I don't get time to read and I don't have great interest to read also. These are different type of readers in our society. I am reading for realizations and I serve, I meditate on it and then I take off and I read, I make notes and then I do my service plus I read every day. Plus sometimes when I get time, I read more on weekends or on holidays, but I read. It's very important for me. And a lot of time I'm engaged in service, but I balance it like this very nicely. I think about it. I'm sure there are other methods that you know or other ways and reasons people read. But I have noticed uh, these kinds prominently prevail. Out of these things, number two is very important. Number four is what number two will evolve to in a good balance. If you're really falling in love with Prabhupada's books, you will definitely serve actively in the movement. When you serve, you will get realizations. Jnana, Vigyana, Sagitam, Yat Jnatva, Mokshayate, Ashubhat. Both jnana and vijnana is required to remove inauspiciousness and fix ourselves in nishta, right? So Prabhupada's instructions should be followed in total, incomplete. So here Prabhupada is saying each and every shloka should be very, very scrutinizingly understood. That should be the first business in the temples, all these books. We have got so many books. Simply if you make arrangement for selling, not for understanding, then it will be simply materialistic. Both things must go on. See Prabhupada saying, reading and this thing, Goshtiyanandi, Bhajanandi, both match together. Okay, so I will go forward a little bit. Prabhupada instituted examinations because he wanted us to carefully read and know, and then he expected that preachers should be there all over the world, and uh, we need to institute these things. Fine. In my books, the philosophy of Krishna consciousness is explained fully. So if there is anything which you do not understand, then you simply have to read again and again. Don't stop reading saying it's very difficult to understand. But you read again and again, you will get to understand. By reading daily, the knowledge will be revealed to you. You may please me most by reading my books and following the instructions there. Okay? Very important point. If you don't understand, don't keep it down. Read again and again and again. Chant two rounds, come back and read again. You will understand. This is Prabhupada's instruction. So these are quotes that I've got a lot, uh, you know. But I want to come to something else. Now, you know, I want to trace a little bit of the history so that you'll understand what Prabhupada has done. The history of book distribution. And why it is so. You know, in India, the Mughal period, it began. And then there was the beginning, Babur, Humayun, Akbar, Jahangir, Shah Jahan, Aurangzeb. It's a very interesting history. Lord Chaitanya's period is somewhere around this time. The rule of the Lodi dynasty was going on from 1451 in India. And somewhere in Mughal rule started in 1526. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu already appeared. In 1486, as you see on the screen, and 1534, he passed away, means he left Aprakat, he became. Between 1486 to 1534, which is 48 years, the Mughal rule started inside. Between 1526, when, when Babur came, Mughal rule started, to 1534 is eight years. Eight years. 
Lord Chaitanya was there during the Mughal rule. After that, he disappeared. And then, you know, many things happened. Then the Goswamis and all of them were there. And prominently, there was this Jiva Goswami. And in, during Akbar's rule, Jiva Goswami met with Akbar. His preaching was so powerful and he was interested in preserving all the writings of the Goswamis and all the great, wonderful associates of Lord Chaitanya. He was himself the nephew, Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami. And uh, he got all their literatures together. Those days, you must remember, there was only one copy. If you want to copy, you have to actually write it and copy it again. So a lot of these Granthas, Nectar of Devotion, that, this, everything was being kept by him. So Jiva Goswami knew that these have to be preserved because Lord Chaitanya's movement has to go all over the world for 10,000 years, Kali Yuga. And all these things were known to them. So they preserved that single copy. So Jiva Goswami, actually it's mentioned, his two Siksha disciples were the right hand and left hand of Akbar, Todarmal and Man Singh. Man Singh was a Rajasthani Jaipuri, very powerful persons. But they were taking instructions from Jiva Goswami. So a lot of the influence that came on Akbar came through these two people. And he became very soft towards Hindus. He had a Hindu wife, Jodabai. And inside the palace, she had her own temple. He never converted her to Muslim. She remained a Hindu. And she also had an influence on Akbar. And in this way, uh, all these influences made Akbar a little very relaxed towards Hindus. Of course, later came Aurangzeb, his descendant, who was the opposite. But during that time, uh, Jiva Goswami even got grant for maintaining a library in Vrindavan to preserve this. Akbar gave a grant. Then he also gave land for building the Govindaji temple and other temple with the best of stones which they were using to build mosques and other things. So all these was done by Jiva Goswami. It's not that he was only a scholar. He was preserving the Krishna consciousness movement and the books then only. So this books thing is not something new. This is going on from then, from the Mughal rule. Then there was a big lull because Aurangzeb became wild, Jahangir, Sajahan, then Aurangzeb was wild and he destroyed the Govindaji temple and many temples and all that. And it became quite a little low. Then came the British rule. During the British rule, there was the British East India Company set up 1757 to 1858. And at that time came the great Bhaktivino Thakur who revived the whole Lord Chaitanya's following and philosophy. 1838 to 1914, then his powerful son Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasri Thakur, 1874 to 1937. He did something different. He started the Gaudiya Mats, 64 Gaudiya Mats. He started the printing press. He started printing like nothing and publishing and countering philosophers. His work was very powerful. So also is Bhaktino Thakur's work. He started writing. He had to search for a copy of Chaitanya Charita Amrita. He did not get a copy of Chaitanya Charita Amrita. They were all called the Badralok. Those times during the British times, they were elite Indians, very well educated in English, studying in the colleges that the Britishers established. And they were known elite Indians. There was Rajaram Mohan Roy. There was that, uh, you know, one Chatterjee. Vivekananda, all of them came from that same group, an elite Indian group who was looking at Indian civilization and culture in a different way. They liked what the Britishers were giving. At the same time, they wanted to preserve their culture. So they mixed these things together with a little bit of Mayavad came in, that came in, everything. Rajara Mohan Roy is known to be the person who has done a lot of this elitist modern Hinduism. And at that time, they were mixing everything and messing it up. But Bhaktino Thakur 
was also part of that type of a group he was very well appreciated by the you know britishers for his english writing and poems and essays and everything he wrote, he read chaucer he read uh, you know uh, paradise lost by milton and shakespeare and all these things then he read about lord chaitanya then he read chaitanya chaitamrita he couldn't get a book so he asked people to search for it and finally he got an old copy and he read that and he was in great ecstasy and then he started speaking writing about lord chaitanya and starting the movement he started the naam hatta every evening was meeting with groups making them chant hare krishna he was reviving because at that time people were thinking anything to do with lord chaitanya's followers were baba ji's bd smokers womanizers they had a very bad name bhaktino taku revived very difficult job you know pulling out the whole thing from the you know gutter very bad social uh, understanding they had about lord chaitanya and his followers so he brought it out and spoke about the brilliant wonderful philosophy of lord chaitanya then taken over by bhakti siddhant sri taguru fought the brahmanas established vaishnavism his life was full of fighting and talking to all these people and all these elitist indians bhakti siddhant sri taguru also was a very educated person at that time he left them like his father advised and joined the whole lord chaitanya's movement and was a pioneer at that time we must simply picture what was going on then came bhakti vedanta swami prabhupada see the history of it and then he did what you know carried the movement forward took it to western lands and distributed these books which was preserved by the goswamis and revived by bhaktivinod thakur then established in press and printing everything which was never available at those time during jeeva goswami some multi copies printing and distributing that he started bhaktivinod thakur and prabhupa took it up and ran with that mantle you know it's like a relay race one person taking for other and running and he ran with it and finished the line by going all over the world and throwing it around in all languages we have 87 languages bhagavad gita is printed in now i don't know even more have been added and he did the finishing job beautifully because that's why he's saying i didn't write them it's been coming down i just put it in a manner that is fit for the day and age in kali yuga that's why i said krishna wrote them right you need to be inspired to write that distilled message from all the great personalities all the goswamis everything coming down in line all of them you must be understanding how they will be looking at prabhupada the final person in the relay race who took it and went past the finishing line and threw it all over the world now you nobody can withdraw it maya cannot withdraw it there is thousands and hundreds and millions of copies of bhagavad gita thrown all around everybody is picking it up i recently did this bhagavad gita overview sessions and 500 and 600 people registered and came in so many uh, you know feedbacks i had from them hearing from them was, uh, made me cry sometimes one girl said that for 17 years it has been in my shelf somebody came and gave me this book long back and i was forced to buy it and i said oh i am never going to read it but i happened to attend your sessions and i knew that is the book is related with this person talking and i took out that book climbed and took out that book and in this 18 days i read the whole book and i never knew this treasure was lying in my house 17 years back i got it but what an amazing thing only now i could read it so imagine these books are all over the place krishna has a plan this is prabhupad this is the the sages in naimisharanya 88000 sages gathered in naimisharanya to discuss how we shall benefit the people in the age of kali and they discussed the shrimad bhagavatam as being the only solution and imagine they said that in kali yuga you know krishna swadhamo pagate dharma gyana adibi sa kalau nashtad drisham esham puranar ko adunodita hai arka the son of the bhagavatam will give light and prabhupada took the bhagavatam and he is published in all languages there all over the place we celebrated 50 years of prabhupada's arrival in cochin in kerala and 
At that time, Prabhupada waited there for two days. He went to a life member's house and he went around Cochin and then he's written in his diary about Cochin and everything. And also, Prabhupada waited there for getting his Bhagavatam sets, which he was going to take to America. They were coming from Bombay in another ship. They came and then he loaded it into Jaraduta. It is known that Bhakti is mentioned in a conversation between Narada Muni, Bhakti, and you'll see that in the Padma Purana, that I will go to foreign lands. Vrindavanam Parityajya. Uh, you know, Videsham Gamyate, something like that, a shloka. I will be going to foreign lands. Now, when Prabhupada was asked, Swamiji, are you going to America? Then Prabhupada is known to have said, Bhagavatam is going to America. I am accompanying. Very amazing. Exactly what was mentioned. Bhakti will go to America. Bhagavatam will go. And Prabhupada said, Bhagavadam is going, I am accompanying. What an amazing understanding of service. What a high class, exotic understanding of devotional service. He knew what he was playing. He knew all of the Acharyas, right from the sages in Naimisharanya to the Goswamis. And all of them are waiting for this moment because they preserved the scriptures. All of them have a stake in it. They preserved the scriptures. Lord Chaitanya told them to write and they wrote. Jiva Goswami preserved them and down the line it was preserved and kept. And there's a wonderful story of how all these scriptures came to Bengal. That we'll also hear. The contributions of all these great personalities to reach these books to us. Jiva Goswami's work, all Sanatan Goswami, Rupa Goswami, Lord Chaitanya's Upadesh to all of them. And Sharvabhama Bhattacharya, Ramananda Rai, and so many authors, Ushana Chakravarti Thakur, you know, Vrindavan Das Thakur, all of them involved. And Prabhupada summarizes everything and puts it in his books. That's why he mentioned Bhakti Vinod Thakur is your second favorite author. All of them are included in this. Read my books. I did not write them. Krishna has written them. So can you understand the amount of thing loaded into these books? And how many great Acharyas down the line are waiting for Prabhupada to do this and he did it. He was a chosen person to do it. And his books have come to us. It's not that Prabhupada wrote it was printed in a printing press and then black and white was assembled together and we're reading something. This is Krishna consciousness. Krishna is available in those pages and they've been preserved by generations of people. They have gone through all sorts of things to bring it to us. To bring it to us. Jiva Goswami worked so hard. I heard the history of us, you know, in thinking of what are we doing? He did so many things. He got involved with the Mughals. He, because he got, he, he inspired many of the leaders to Rajput kings to give their daughters in marriage to the Mughals so that there'll be a relationship. And that's why Jaipur and all were never attacked. That's why all the deities went to Jaipur from Vrindavan. And there was some place where he could store all these things together. So he had a political uh, maneuver. He had a political strategy to preserve for the future the amount of things that they went through. Amazing things they did. Sometimes we think that we go to the courts, we go to fight cases and all that. We wonder why we should do that. But a lot of our ancestors did many of these things. Many, many of these things. We may need to do anything to preserve these wonderful Krishna conscious literature. So having said that, now you can appreciate what was Prabhupada bringing down the line. He was bringing the distilled message of all these great personalities. <clears throat> he was inspired to write them. Because I always ask people, Prabhupada was told by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, if you ever get money, print books. And Bhaktisiddhanta Sasi Thakur was a prolific writer in Bengali, in Sanskrit, in English, you name it. Why did not Prabhupada simply print Bhaktisiddhanta Sasi Thakur's books? We are told to print books, we'll print Prabhupada's books or give donation for printing Prabhupada's books. 
Why did he not do that? He said, yes, I'm doing that only. It's Bhakti Siddhanta Sasi Thakur who's dictating to me. He's writing. He was very clear. This is what Bhakti Siddhanta Sasi Thakur wants. Wants me to write these books. So can you imagine? Uh, all these great Acharya's works were inside that. That's gone all over the world. What Prabhupada has done has pleased so many. And they're all pleased that we will have the books to read. Now, should we not read it? After amount of work that people have done, right from Lord Chaitanya onwards to the Goswamis, to the you know, great personalities in Naimisharanya thousands of years back, Veda Vyas, all of them desired it. That people, that's why he wrote. Veda Vyas wrote this for the sake of Kali Yuga. People, because Mandha, Asmanda, Matayo, Mandabhagi, Upadruta, they will not be able to remember and do anything. So that has come in this form to us. Should we not read it? Now hear the story of how Jiva Goswami, who had all these powerful personalities with him, and he did many things. He had all this grantha with him. So he said the best place to get it across, don't keep it in Vrindavan, enough. I've guarded it enough. Better get it to Bengal, Lord Chaitanya's place, and we have our people there. It's easier to protect it. So he called upon that famous trio, Narutam Das Thakur, Srinivas Acharya, and Shamananda Pandit, who were his powerful disciples, to carry this across. He made, using a donor, he made a nice cart, horse cart, bullock cart, whatever, I don't know the details of it. He made a beautiful cart. He put these things in a wonderful packaging. They even waxed it. They didn't have plastic maybe those days in mass production. They waxed the cloth so that if rain falls, it will fall off. They did tied it up. They treasured it like nothing. Then using his influence from the army, Jiva Goswami got his disciples sent three soldiers with spears and everything. And they walked all the way. Because Jiva Goswami told them, this is your first devotional service, practical devotional service. Take it across to Bengal. And there's a beautiful story. They took it across to Bengal. You must have heard this. Very carefully, they came across borders everywhere. They came, no sleep properly, no eating properly. But all three of them were dedicated to do the service. And they came all the way. When they reached the border of Bengal, they said, oh, my gosh, now we have reached Bengal. Be happy. But in Bengal, was it King Birambir ruling in that border place? I forget the name of that place. And he was a very strange king. Because in the daytime, he was a king. In the nighttime, he was a decoit. And he was a professional decoit. He was a king turned a decoit in the night. He had his group of people. And he had an astrologer tell which marriage party is coming. Which party is coming with what wealth, everything. And they would attack and take it. Nobody would know who did it. Travelers, visitors, new people they'll be killed. I mean, they'll be robbed. And all their wealth will be taken away. This is how he was ruling his kingdom. Now, here comes uh, this trio with this great luggage. That night, they thought, oh, we have crossed the border. We are inside Bengal now. They went to sleep. Because they were very peaceful, we are in Bengal. You know, the way things happen. We are in Bengal, they thought. But these uh, King Berambur's uh, astrologer told them there's a fantastic wealth coming. If you can get that, it's enough for you. You can stop this decoiting forever. Such much wealth is there in that. Right? Plan it very carefully. Don't make a mess. They are very intelligent people. They're extremely intelligent. It's guarded very well. So before they came into Bengal itself, they were following it, this group. King Berambur's group. They followed, followed, and they decided, let them go into Bengal. Once they do it inside our kingdom, we have all the security. Their thinking was also something similar, but favorable to them. So once they got into the border and these people slept, these people took away the entire cartload. In the morning, they slept so soundly. When they got up, they found that it's not there. My gosh, what a huge thunderbolt hit them. Where did it go? We guarded it all the way up to Bengal and we lost, lose it in Bengal. 
and they became very morose. Narutam Shyamananda. It's Srinivas Acharya said, no, 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 no. Krishna has some plan. Let's go and find out. Don't worry. Don't be morose. And they went into the city. And Srinivas Acharya started talking to people and asking. We are, you know, mendicants traveling. And we just want to know who is who, what is what. Then he got friendly with somebody who told him that you must come. You are a pretty decent person. Good Brahmana, it looks like. And uh, you're a learned man. Why don't you come in here? The, uh, there is a Bhagavat Acharya who is going to give Bhagavatam every day, especially for the king he speaks. Many of the elite people come and they hear the Bhagavatam. Why don't you come? He said, I'm not in the mood. You know, I'm just uh, looking for shelter and I need to find something that I lost. He said, no, no, you come and hear the Bhagavatam. Everything will be all right. And because the stranger was telling him and he was a nice man, he had become friendly, he went. He sat down in the hall. You know, when you're disinterested, you sit down and he was half asleep a little bit and the Bhagavadacharya was speaking. He was speaking one type of Bhagavatam. And the king was sitting on his throne and hearing. Many great ministers and all of them were hearing because the king is hearing. You know, the type of official thing. The king was really interested also. He was hearing. And then... Uh, hearing that Srinivas Acharya said, ah, he's not speaking the right stuff. He's not speaking the real Bhagavatam. He started murmuring. They said, no, 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 listen to it. Listen to it. He's a big speaker. He said, no, I can't listen to this. I mean, he said, no, 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 no. Then somehow the other, the day passed. The next day, again, he forced him to come. He said, please don't ask me to come. My mind is filled with other things. I'm your good friend, but they don't. He said, no, no, you come. You'll get the answers there. The solution for your thing, I tell you. So he came again. He came again. He couldn't take it. He got up in the middle and said, that's not the meaning of this. This is the meaning of this. He couldn't take it. So the Bhagavad Acharya got stunned. Who is this upstart? I am Acharya of the king. I am teaching him Bhagavatam. And this man, who is he? So you know better? And then the king said, no, no, let him speak. When the Bhagavad Acharya got into argument with him, he said, no, no, let him speak. He just wants to speak. Like he told the Bhagavad Acharya, wait, let him speak. And so he spoke. He gave the beautiful explanation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the rasa filled explanation. He gave. And the king liked it very much. And the king actually called him the next day, You speak. And Srinivas Acharya spoke the next day. And the whole town started hearing after day after day. He started speaking the Bhagavat and he was feeling light. Whew. Then the king invited him, Come home, stay with me. Where are you staying? Who are you? And the king got familiar with him. Come and stay in my palace. And forced him to come and stay in the palace. He stayed next door to the king. In the night, Srinivas Acharya was crying to Krishna. What a big situation you put me into. I am your servant. I came to do this seva for my guru, Jiva Goswami. How will I answer him? How will I face him? Why did this happen to me? Oh my Lord. And he was crying and crying. Through the door, the king heard this. My gosh, not only does he speak Bhagavatam beautifully, he's praying, crying to the Lord. This is a real sadhu. I must help him. He has some difficulty. So the next morning, he said, I heard you in the night. You were this thing. What is the problem? Why don't you tell me? I'll help you. I am waiting to do something for you. And then <laughs> Shiva Sacharya told him, this is what has happened. All the great granthas I bought has all disappeared. Then King Birambir in the meantime had already gone. Days have passed and got the treasure. And they opened up the treasure and saw it's all books and grantha and scriptures and leaves and everything written. And said, Where is the this thing here? Yeah. And he got very disturbed and angry with the Jyotish man. And these people said, You brought the wrong thing. Where is the gold? Where is the necklace? Where is the pearls? Where is the wealth? He didn't say anything. So he just kept aside and said, something is wrong with this. And Jyotish said, there's something about it. Don't do anything to it. So he had left it aside. Now he comes here and speaks to Srinivas Acharya and he's saying, this is it. And then Kirim Birambir paid obeisance to him. I am that person who stole it. This is my profession. I'll never do it again. It's safe with me. Don't worry. I want to assure you, everything is safe. Not one leaf has been taken out. And Srinivas Acharya's happiness knew no bounds. He started jumping and dancing. I knew Krishna had planned something. In this way, 
that King Birambir appointed Srinivas Acharya as a special person. He took initiation from him. All the great people, the whole kingdom became his disciples. And the Grantha was brought. See, this is one event. Because of that thing happening, today we are seeing that same Grantha in the form of Prabhupada's books. This is another history. So look at the history behind. We will value Prabhupada's books much more. It is just that it is written in a language fit for people in Kali Yuga. Very beautifully by Prabhupada, he is the empowered person to do that. And what Prabhupada has done, nobody else can do, need to do also. We just have to read those books scrutinizingly. Why Prabhupada is repeatedly saying, read it two to three hours a day, read it scrutinizingly, write the exam, study it. Your knowledge will increase and you'll understand Krishna consciousness. So we should not take this lightly. There are numerous letters of Prabhupada that say that. Yeah. Om Tatsat, Hare Krishna, Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai. 